Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, I've got a guide for you on all of the secret weapons in the game. And yes, you heard that correctly. There are secret weapons in Modern Warfare, sort of. Essentially, Modern Warfare has several secret weapons that you can unlock through max leveling a gun, or at least getting a certain gun very, very high level, because then you can convert it into a totally different weapon. Some of these are more cosmetic than others. Some are major changes, and others are relatively minor. I'm gonna be doing a mini guide on each and every single secret weapon in the game, which is a lot of ammo conversion stuff, so I hope you enjoy it. And a little list, a little teaser before we get going, I'm going to be covering the MPX, M16, AK-74U, RPK, Steyr Aug, Executioner, Honey Badger, and Star Wars Blaster, and no, I'm not making jokes about those last two. They're actually in this game somehow. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the MPX, which I, is, starts off as an assault rifle, based base M4, and essentially to make this weapon what you need to do is equip the ammunition conversion to 9mm para 32 round magazine, then you want to put on the shortest possible barrel, which is the 11.5 inch commando barrel, and remove the stock from the weapon. You can use the other attachments as you see fit, but what you're left with is the real life MPX, which is essentially a submachine gun platform M4, and it pretty much completely changes the weapon in Modern Warfare. The base M4 has has a damage of 28 to 18, depending on where you hit their body and range and such. However, the MPX 9mm has a damage of 22 to 14, so significantly lower damage, but there's an asterisk there because it has a higher chest multiplier, which means if one of your bullets hits somebody in the upper chest, I'm going to just call it belly button and up, it'll deal a little bit more damage and actually make it one less shot to kill. The change in rate of fire is 800 up to 1000 rounds per minute. So the 9mm, or the MPX version I should say, is way faster firing. So even though you do lose range and you do lose damage, it helps keep your overall time to kill very low and competitive. The new time to kill is going to be almost as low as the new range on your MPX. This is the four shot kill range and it's, it's literally three meters. It's pretty much point blank in their face. A lot of the, actually almost all of the time for this gun, you're going to need five to six shots to kill. It really just does doesn't crank damage. It does have way better handling than the base M4A1. It has a sprint out time of 230 milliseconds and an insanely fast aim down sights time of 150 milliseconds. So it doesn't really change a whole lot on your sprint out, but it definitely changes your aim down sights time from the base version of the gun. So if you're not sprinting all over, you're corner peeking and corner snapping, it'll be very, very effective. And in my opinion, the MPX is actually a really, really good close quarters combat weapon and I actually prefer it over several submachine guns. I have really good results with this weapon, so if there's anything you do try from today's episode, I'd recommend it being the MPX. Moving along, let's talk about one other M4 variant that I'm sure you guys are excited about, which is the M16. The M16 is much more straightforward to convert. There is an M16 grenadier barrel that you can put on the weapon, literally says M16 stock that you can put on the weapon, and then in the perks, you can equip three round burst. By looks and by, well, performance, you've now essentially made an M16. The thing about it, though, is this doesn't change the damage, which means that you're not going to get a lot of one burst kills. The rate of fire doesn't change at all. Uh, it's, it's the same rate of fire inside the burst, but now you have delay between bursts, so your overall time to kill and effective range and all of that have gone downhill. The M16 is kind of a miserable weapon to use, and I wouldn't recommend doing it except you can kind of go off the recipe here and add one other attachment, which is the 458 SOCOM rounds, and that will actually make it a three-shot kill at any range, and it feels much more like an M16 should. Technically, this is for a different variant of the weapon, which I'm not going to consider its own unique thing. There was actually a Reddit post about this and everything else. It popped up today while I was editing this episode, so I'm going to link that down there below. Sort of a guns expert that lists every possible new weapon and configuration that you can have in the game. It's interesting how that got on the front page as I was editing my episodes, so now everybody's going to be like, you're stealing from Redditors, but that's okay. They hate me there anyway. But anyway, the new M4A1 with the 458 SOCOM rounds will deal 40 eight damage to 41 and it'll always two tap to the head or three to the body. It is it is a really, really high damage weapon. And what this means is that you'll get a lot of one burst kills 
and it'll feel more like an M16. Your rate of fire will go downhill when you do this. It'll go from 800 to 600, but that isn't so bad because it can help tighten your burst a little bit. It doesn't kick up quite as violently. Handling attributes will be significantly worse if you kit your weapon this way. That's, that's a real fact. I, I didn't even measure them because you're basically just making it the slowest weapon possible for that class, so it's not anything surprising to any of you. And the M16 is fun to use. I had a fun time using it. I felt like I was going back in time and playing a different game. It was really entertaining, but it wasn't really practical. This is another weapon that I would not recommend to most people. I have like a big section of weapons that I wouldn't recommend, and then I have some nicer ones at the end. Moving along, let's talk about the ever so popular AK-74U, which we haven't seen in a Call of Duty game, an Infinity Ward game, since uh, the Modern Warfare series, the OG Modern Warfare series. Well, in this game, much like real life, you have to start with a base AK-47 and down convert it to the AK-74U. Doing that's pretty straightforward. You want to lower the caliber of the ammunition in the weapon down to the 545 millimeter, which is uh, it's a pretty high tier unlock. Then you have to use the 8.1 inch compact barrel, which is essentially no barrel at all, and no stock. I also put on sleight of hand and the stipled grip tape to give myself a little bit more recoil control, but that is effectively an AK-74U. You can do what you want with the other attachments. This changes the weapon very significantly. First of all, your damage is going to go down. The base AK-47 has a damage of 35 to 32 depending on your range. It actually doesn't go down that much in my experience, at least not on any of the gunfight matches where I can properly test the damage. And the AK-74U damage is almost halved in some circumstances. It goes from 22 down to 14, but you will notice that these also have the little asterisks because they do have a higher chest multiplier. The chest multiplier doesn't make much difference for the base AK because it's still always a three shot kill, but it can make a difference for your AK-74U. So if you're running the 74U variant and you shoot people belly button and up, there's a chance that it could be a four shot kill in instead of what is effectively a five shot kill weapon now. The rate of fire does increase a little bit. Uh, that's 540 rounds per minute up to 666 rounds per minute, Satan's number, which theoretically helps your close range time to kill. However, adding these attachments cuts your range at least in half and increases your shots to kill by at least one, if not more, in all areas. When I test, test out the base AK-47, I can three shot people all the way across this long strip on Grozno, which is longer than most of the distances you're gonna engage anybody with with this weapon. And then when I do the base AK-74U, I get the four shot kills at 32 meters. So that's at minimum half to the range, which in my opinion is quite rough. The handling isn't crazy better. You do get a better sprint out time. The base AK-47 has a sprint out time of 280 milliseconds. This one will go down to 200. And your aim down sights time gets about 100 milliseconds faster as well. So it is a snappier weapon and it does shoot a little bit faster. It's supposed to have less kick with the ammunition down conversion. Like with the ammo change, it will kick less. But when you do weirder things with other attachments like removing the stock and shortening the barrel a whole lot, that's going to increase your kick or recoil per shot. So in my opinion, the recoil isn't significantly better. What you've effectively done is just murdered your range and time to kill on this weapon for a little bit of gain in fire rate and maybe a little bit of gain in handling. In my opinion, it's best to put on all of these same attachments but keep the regular 7.62 ammo in your AK-74U and that'll just perform better. I strongly dislike the AK-74U and don't recommend using it well, to anybody. I just don't think it's a very good weapon. Maybe that's just me, because I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've been doing YouTube a long time. By most standards, I'm totally washed. I have no reaction time and no thumbs. And some days, I just, I just feel like a dinosaur. I feel like I don't belong, like I'm totally washed. And that's how the AK-74U makes me feel. So since I can't get good gameplay with this weapon, instead, I have to sell Astro headsets. I started YouTube in 2006, and I went full-time in 2009. That means I've been a professional YouTuber for over a decade now, and that's kind of awesome in a way, but scary considering that most content creators burn out after four years. You can only battle the algorithms for so long. Well, what this means is that I am officially an old tuber, or a dinosaur to this platform, to be more accurate. 
Times are hard for dinosaurs like me. My channel isn't doing as well as it once did, dying in some people's opinions. And if you read the comments below, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will tell me I already have a dead channel. Demonetization is rampant, YouTube changes their policies every month, and some days my only choice is to go out on the streets and beg for money. It's shameful, but it pays for all the COD points, V-Bucks, and Tesla supercharges that I need to get by. Sometimes the work gets too hard, and I have to get a drink, or maybe an ice cream cone. Like your grandfather, this dinosaur loves ice cream, because it's soft and you don't have to chew it. Sadly, my, my teeth aren't as sharp as they used to be. There is one bright spot in my life as a YouTube dinosaur, and that's Astro Gaming. Being able to sell their headsets to you at 5% off using the link in the description is what funds my ability to keep making videos and is what keeps In-Depth alive as a series. It's been so successful for me that I started selling them on the street instead of just begging people for money. Now I can provide them with a product and a service and make a nice commission on top of that. If you want to help this old tuber survive, then there's two things you can do. Number one is to click the link in the description and get yourself an Astro C40TR controller or A40TR headset. They're fantastic products that I use every single day. And number two is that if you don't want to buy anything, you can just click that link in the description and get my click-through rate crazy high because that will also help me. Please, just, just think of the old dinosaur here. If I don't get enough Astro money, then I won't be able to feed hamburgers to my poor doges and they might get skinny again. Please help. Moving along, let's take a look at another A-Case 47 conversion that is on the exact opposite spectrum of everything, and that's creating the RPK. In order to create the RPK is very straightforward. All you have to do is add the 23-inch RPK barrel, then you add the LMG field stock and the 75-round magazine. The RPK, are doing it this way, it's mostly the barrel, it's what changes things. It adds an incredible amount of range to your weapon. I mean, the, the range stat just goes bonkers. I, I have an episode coming up later on barrels and ballistics and stuff, but I do promise you the barrels do work. It's more than I could test for. You've got god tier range. It's almost always going to be a three-shot monster no matter where you're aiming it. It does lower recoil significantly. It increases bullet velocity and it basically triples your magazine size almost, so you have a whole lot of good things going on about the RPK. It's one of my favorite weapons to use in Ground War. I don't have to worry about reloading. When I do reload, it's not even too bad. It mounts well, it aims well. However, the handling is a lot worse. Comparatively, we saw these numbers just before the dinosaur break. It, it almost doubles most of your basic handling stats, both the sprint out and the aim down sights time were 500 milliseconds, which was just brutal. That's a whole half second before you can react or do anything when you kit a weapon this way. So it puts you out of commission really hard. You cannot rush with the RPK. You can't play aggressive with the RPK, but you can hold down positions like a god. The RPK is my favorite light machine gun so far in Modern Warfare. It's not quite as high damage and range and as performance as the others, but since you're upconverting an AK, it is effectively a slightly lighter light machine gun that is a little bit faster than the others, and I find that little bit of fastness to be easier to deal with, and I've overall had a fantastic time with RPK. I'd recommend it to anybody, especially in Ground War. It's super good in Ground War for holding down positions. Now, the last major weapon that we're going to talk about today is kind of a weird one because it's bugged. We're going to be talking about the AUG A3, or the Steyr AUG, because the one we have in the game is the what's effectively the 9mm down conversion. The, it's the MPX of the real gun, which is a 5.56 rifle made by Steyr. And in this game, you can up-convert 5.56 to the real gun. In order to create the Steyr AUG out of the base AUG, you need to put the 5.56mm ammo attachment on it, which makes it into a rifle. You need to put the custom AUG A3 scope on it, which is one of the last scopes that you're going to unlock and the longest barrel possible. Doing so creates the classic AUG that we all know and love. So the base AUG will deal 34 to 18 damage depending on where you hit, and the Steyr AUG, after we've changed it to 5.56, will deal 32 to I'm not exactly sure how much damage because the 5.56 millimeter attachment is bugged. In general, it does less damage than the base version, but it does have a higher multiplier on some regions of the chest, so it can effectively deal more damage to the chest, but less damage to the head. And these multipliers also seem a little bit bugged and out of place. I would get headshots for shooting people in the stomach, and like it would count for limbs on shoulders, and it did a lot of really weird stuff. 
So I'm not sure what happened with the 556 conversion, what went wrong where, but it's definitely bugged. And I was having a hard time getting any consistent multipliers out of it, which is why I have the question marks because I couldn't even do the long range testing. I, I couldn't accurately hit the body enough to quite figure out what was going on at long ranges. So please keep in mind, if you use this weapon this way, it's bugged and it's not super reliable. It does lower your rate of fire as well from 740 rounds per minute down to 640. So you have lower damage and lower rate of fire? Ew, like why would you, why would you use this at all? Well, uh, it almost quadruples your three shot kill range if you hit upper chest and up. That upper chest region deals more damage than the base AUG, even though everything else deals less if it, if it counts right. So you can get super long three shot kills with the AUG. Like the base AUG, just the normal plain Jane AUG, has a three shot kill range of 11 meters. However, if you use the 5.56 one, it has a three shot kill range of 37 meters. The handling time is of course gonna be a little bit worse than the base variant. Your base handling time is 350 milliseconds for sprint out. By the time you've turned it into the proper full length rifle, it goes up to 350. And your aim down sights time oddly didn't change for me. Maybe, maybe I'm drunk, maybe I'm measured that wrong, I'm not entirely sure. However, overall, I would not recommend kitting your weapon like this. Adding the 5.56 rounds to the AUG opens up a whole big unpredictable can of worms and I, I just don't recommend it. I think it's gonna make your weapon slower, I think it's gonna make it less reliable, and I'm assuming I can do an update video at some point in the future and this will be fixed because they're, I, I, I'm, IW's just constantly fixing things. We've had a pretty frequent patches from them, so hopefully this gets changed in the future. Next up today is a simple one. Adding snakeshot ammo to the 357 Magnum turns it into the Executioner from Black Ops 2. It is a shotgun pistol, and I gotta let you guys know it's awesome. I have a lot of details about this weapon in the pistol episode, which was the last one, and then like two episodes back I have it in the shotgun episode. I think I'm mentioning this weapon in almost every episode because I think it's one of the like most powerful sleeper weapons in the game that everybody is ignoring. It's easily the best pistol in Modern Warfare. There's nothing else that really competes with the snake shot because pistols they, they deal low damage, their hits aren't super reliable, you can't really use them as primary weapons, and what you're doing with a pistol in Modern Warfare most of the time is rapidly swapping to it and just spamming and praying and trying to get those shots to finish people off. Well, with this one, you're shooting shotgun pellets that spreads. So you don't even have to be that accurate, and they deal a ton of damage, more than some of the other shotguns in the game. So if you have a sniper rifle or a long-range weapon and you want to tactically hold a building, or for some reason, when you're done tactically waiting in a dark corner in a building and you want to move around a little bit, you can pop this one out and you can move around close quarters very effectively with the snake shot. It, it does really, really good work. Lastly, I do want to say that it's possible to convert the M13 into something similar to the Ghost Honey Badger. In order to do so, you have to put on the Tempest Cyclone, integrated suppressor which makes your muzzle not available, the FPS close quarters stock, and most importantly the 300 blackout ammunition which changes your bullet velocity, you trace rounds, enemy skulls, and quite a few things, and it makes it sort of an integrated, dedicated, suppressed weapon. Unfortunately, I don't have any gameplay of this one, guys. I, it kind of sucks today, but it takes forever to level these weapons up. It takes until the end of time and then some. So I, had, I worked really hard to get all of the other weapons at max level, but this one just I was not able to do. And finally, at the end, I didn't forget about this, the Star Wars Blaster. It isn't really a new weapon quite like the others, not a real one, but it is really funny looking, to be sure. All you have to do is take the Kilo 141, you put the 100 drum round mag on it, you put a sniper scope on it, you remove the stock, and you put the shortest barrel possible. Whatever attachments are left, you can do whatever you want. I like putting what the whitest camo I have on it too, trying to make it all white. And it looks literally like a Star Wars blaster. This is almost more like a cosmetic variant and much less of an actual in-game stat changing thing like all of these other weapons. However, it is surprisingly viable. You can actually kill people pretty well with this weapon. Like, it's not it's not the best weapon, no, but it's actually better than some of the other weapons like the AUG and the uh, AK-74U that I've shown off today. It's better than the M16 to be sure. The gameplay you're seeing of this is me playing on PlayStation 4 against an entire full team of PlayStation of PC players. I am the only console player in this lobby. I was prepared to just get completely railed 
but I managed to do okay, so it's kind of fun. If you guys want to have a fun gun, that's one I would recommend. And I did link the Reddit thread down below where the gun expert goes over a few more other, we'll say, variants of weapons. I wouldn't quite call all of them truly new guns. That is all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, or buy an Astro Controller. Drifter out.